Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melder Production, and today I thought I'd do just a basic walkthrough of M Rhythmizer. So M Rhythmizer is a plugin that can create all sorts of different uh, rhythmic effects. Uh, I like to use it for things like trance gates or stutter effects, etc. But it can do lots of different things. So let me show you how to use it because when I first used it, I was a little bit confused. So let me first show you what it looks like. So when you first open it up, it'll look like this. And now you see here, it has things as C1, C sharp one, and these are actually keys on your keyboard. So you can trigger this using MIDI. But when you first start, you'll notice like, oh, there's, it's not working. It's not hooked up to my keyboard. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. Now, of course, it's easy if your keyboard is on the same track as M Rhythm Rhythmizer, but the problem is sometimes that's not the case. So you need to make a separate MIDI track. So I have one right here that's hooked up to my keyboard. Now to actually get this to work, one thing I'm gonna to need to do is send something to this. So in this case, I have an instance of M Power Synth also here. So when I send the MIDI to there, the problem is it's going to be taken by M Power Synth. So I need to route this to its own MIDI bus. So I'm gonna just change this to bus two here. And then here in Reaper, sorry, wrong button. I'm going to go to I.O. and then MIDI input bus 2. So now that that's set up, I should be able to trigger it from my keyboard like this. So as you see when I press the different buttons, I'm triggering the different patterns, but you're probably noticing, hey, there's no patterns here. So to start off, let's just use one of the presets. I like general. General generally works pretty well for me. No pun intended. So you see now I have a lot of different patterns in here. And if I use my MIDI keyboard, I can trigger them. So now let's go over some of the basic functions. So one of the first things I have here is this function called scratch. So let me just play this short MIDI pattern. Okay. And if I move this, I can actually change it. And it sounds like, you know, a DJ scratching a record. So that's an easy way to create those types of scratching sounds. You can automate that, obviously. Wet dry is you know, exactly what you think it would be. Uh, so if I have something like this trance gate here. So by using this dry wet control, you can fade it in and out, which is useful sometimes. Sometimes you might want to change that from, you know, a, a trance gate into just a pad sound. Uh, tempo is self-explanatory. It's synced to tempo by default, sync with host. Shuffle lets you shuffle the rhythms, it's easy. And speed up just takes the pattern and does it at twice the speed. So if I have, let's say, a trance gate like this, So as you saw, there's quite a few different speeds. There's uh, a fourth of the speed, half the speed, normal speed, twice the speed, and four times the speed. So that's really useful. Sometimes you'll want to use that. And the last thing I want to talk about is this advanced tab here. So the lazy sync, um, this one, it, I just generally leave it on. It's on by default. I believe in some host it won't sync correctly, so this sometimes helps. Uh, I don't notice too much of a difference. Uh, they have an explanation here inside this little question mark if you want to read it, but generally I leave it on, it doesn't make too much of a difference. The note off, in my opinion, is really important. This is what I usually turn on. And what this does is it returns the pattern back to C after you're done. And it does that so when you release it, instead of repeating the same pattern over and over again, it just goes back to blank, basically. So if I turn this, if I have this off, you see now when I move this, it just stays in the same place. But if I turn this on, now when I let go of my key, it goes back to the beginning, the C1 in this case. The other one's triggering. 
It has about four modes here. Immediate, this means as soon as you touch the key, it will go to the next uh, pattern. Immediate single shot means it will go to the next pattern, but then at the end of the pattern, it will return to C1. So if I have note off, if I press this, as soon as I the pattern finishes, it will return back to C. So I'll, I'll play it so you can actually hear what it does like this. So that's immediate. You see it didn't return. Let's try immediate single shot. So you saw at the end of the bar, it just returned back to C1. The next one is next bar. So this means when I press the key, it won't play immediately. It'll wait till the beginning of the bar and then it'll start to play it. And then next bar, single shot, same thing as before. It'll wait until it starts, the next bar starts, and then at the end of the bar, it'll return back to C. So easy enough, right? Let's go into the different modes here. Let's start with volume. It's maybe the easiest one to understand. So this volume, you see here, it's all the way up. So you can see at the Y axis, it goes from zero dB to silence. And then the X axis is time. So C4, it's just volume all the way up have different gates, so I'll let you hear this eighth note gate. You can see it, and then it has different patterns like trance gates, etc., which are really useful. I like these. But one thing I probably should say is this attack and release. These will cause these to be almost like rounded. It'll increase the attack so you won't have such a, a sharp attack. So let's try it with like 16th triplets with attack down like it is now. Let's try it moving these up. You can hear it's a little bit softer sounding. So if you like that, or if you know it's like, ah, it's too sharp, or it's clicking too much, try that. And the depth is almost like a wet dry knob, but I think it actually controls the decibels here. Okay. So I think you get the idea. Next one is the filter. For this one, oh, let me move this back since I don't have it on note off. The filter works in a similar way, but remember you have to actually turn this on. So I enable this. And now when I play this, you'll notice this is all the way at 0%. So it has a high pass at 1000 and low pass at 1000. So it should sound band passed. Okay, if I move it all the way up to the top, you'll get the full sound. So the high pass will be at 20 and the low pass will be at 2000. So it'll just sound like the normal audio. And you can move this. So all you have to remember is at 0%, it'll be the value indicated here. And at 100%, it'll be the maximum value. So at high pass, it'll be 2000 or 20 hertz. And for the low pass, it'll be 20 kilohertz. So let's actually turn this off because I don't really need to use the high pass. I don't like it that much, but you might want to use it. And let's turn this low pass. Let's do a thousand. So the first one here, so pattern. Let's see what this sounds like. Okay. So you get an idea of what that can do, or let's try this one fade in. So one thing I might want to do is start this really low, let's say around 100 hertz, and then have it open up. And now the speed is at just normal speed, 1x, but let's say I want this to happen over four bars. So I'll do 1 fourth x, so it'll go slower. Now let's hear this. Okay, so that's something maybe I would use in an actual song. And I can do the same thing with the attack and release, just as before. Those are the same as the volume. And the last thing I want to talk about is the time. This is probably the most complicated one. So, let me move this back to normal speed. If you see here the x-axis, this is the 
beat. So the first beat, second beat, third beat, fourth beat, etc. You can see here. And this one is the y-axis is what is actually being played at the time. So at zero, this means you're playing the current audio, or so the current beat. Minus one means you're one you're playing what's one beat behind. Negative two is two beats behind. Negative three is three beats behind. Negative four is four beats behind. So this one, I don't want to go farther than four. And the reason is because I'm in four, four time. If you're doing, let's say, um, six, four time or three, four time, you probably want to adjust this. And where it says sequence length here, you might want to go you know, higher or lower. So you can change that to whatever you want, like three or eight, etc. And that'll change here corresponding to this. Another thing I should talk about too is the grid lines. So the grid lines here, when you're making your own patterns, you can chop this up. So now I have it at 16th notes, but I could put this at eighth notes. See it goes away. Or triplets. So this can be useful if you want to snap something to the grid and make sure everything's you know synced up. But let me show you what this sounds like. So if I do repeat four. So if you look across here, you see it goes one, two, three, four at a time. And now at this point, it says negative one. So that means it'll play the audio from here. Here it's negative two, means it'll play the audio from here. Negative three means it'll play the audio from here. So basically it's gonna play this first beat over and over again. And for me, for these time-based effects, I think these work better with rhythmic things instead of just pads. So let me switch this over so now I have it playing on the synthesizer, but let me turn this off and switch to different audio here. Okay, so now I have it on this other track here and I have arpeggios, I'll let you listen to. Let me bypass this so you can hear it. So just some arpeggios. Now let's play it again and let's try the repeat four and see what this sounds like. So as you heard, it's just repeating that first beat over and over again. If I do this one, repeat eight, it's going to repeat in eighth notes. And it can go even higher. Let's try repeat 30 second note triplets. So those are really interesting and you can see how they work if you remember that explanation from before. But there's other things here like uh, syncopated beats. So you can see it's not exactly on the grid line, but at a 16th note off. So let's see how this sounds. And then there's all sorts of other things like this or this. Let's hear how it sounds. So you can see there's lots of different and interesting rhythmic combinations. And if you get to things like uh, this, when you're using more smooth lines, you're going to get all sorts of like those uh, scratching or slow down effects. So I'll let you hear it like this. Or even this. So those are some things you can do. And one more thing I should probably talk about is how to actually program these. So if I go into default again, you see like, oh, there's nothing here. How do I you know, create my own sounds? So let's try volume first, just because it'll be a little bit easier. If I cl double click here, I can add nodes. So I could do something like this and I can move these however I want. So I could do something like this in C1. But I imagine you're probably thinking, oh, it's going to take forever if I want to make one of those complex patterns. But there's actually another way you can do that. Let me move this to C sharp four. If I right click, there's a lots of different options here. So I can use all these different modes you see here to create them. Let's try pulses. So I'll show you what you can do with this. 
So if I add something in here, move this all the way down. Now if I click on one of these nodes, it's going to create a square sound, or square shape. So now I have one pulse, move it up, two pulses, three pulses, four, five, six, seven, etc. And I can do the same thing here. So let's try something like this. Actually, let me move this back to more of a pad sound. So you get the idea, and if I just hit clear points, it goes back to normal. Another thing I can do is I can use the step sequencer, and I can create steps. So let's say if I want to do something, let's try like 16 steps, uh, like this. I can just move these different shapes however I want. Let's try something like this. So you see it put it in for me. I can adjust the release of the attack. Let's see how this sounds. And of course there's other things I could do, like I could change this to signs. If I click signs, change all, this, all of these to sine waves or triangle or sawtooth or pulses, etc. So you can get all sorts of different and interesting effects. And another thing you might be worried about is you're thinking like, oh, I don't want to do this every single time or like, how, what if I like a pattern and I, I just have to create a preset with just that one pattern. But actually each of these little boxes here, you can create a preset for and if you right click it, you can open the presets here and you see there's all, oh, there's already transgate presets loaded in here or gate presets or utility presets. There's all sorts of things in here already. So you don't have to make them every single time and you can right click it and you can actually like save it in here by clicking save if you have a pattern that you really like. So there's all sorts of things you can do with this. You can copy these and move it someplace else if you want. Uh, you could paste one from the filter into the time, etc. And it just makes it a lot easier for you to reuse these patterns if you have one that you really like. But that's it for today. I hope this gave you some ideas and explained how to use MRhythmizer because sometimes it's a little bit difficult, but hopefully it's a little bit more clear. If it's not, please leave me a question down below. If you like this, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe and be sure to check out all the other plugins at melderproduction.com. Until next time, see you.